Hi, y'all, and welcome to our, I think it's like our third call. Like our third call. And Hustle and Dynasty call. And we have an amazing, so I met this babe in the test group, you know, the Shanti test group that like we all basically killed ourselves to get into. And we all were collabing and trying to figure out how to launch it. And so they started this group and I was like the late bird in it. So I found it like 900 years later. I was like, can I join y'all's group? And they were just so forthcoming and so welcoming. And that's basically how we met. And then we were chatting goals and our goals like pretty much aligned. And we both were talking about how we run our business. And a lot of the coaches were saying they run theirs a lot differently than us. And we built our foundation on inviting and inviting to the opportunity, inviting to boot camps. And so I wanted her to come and just let y'all know how she invites because you guys know how I do. Um, well, some of y'all do. And then good to hear different perspectives. And so this babe is a lifetime diamond coach. So that means she is in the tippity tippity top 1% of the company. She is a success club legend. Y'all, I know most of you guys don't know what that means, but it is like the biggest freaking deal ever. That means she has hit success club, not for one month or six months or even 12 months, but 24 months in a row plus whatever. I don't even know. She might be plus. Like that, it's not hard. It just takes a lot of consistency. And so I'm sure she'll bring that word up because you guys know that's my favorite word. I swear I'm going to get it tattooed on my ass one of these days. Um, but that's it. And her name, team name is Team Hyperdrive. So I'm going to let her take it over. I'm going to mute myself. Oh, I was going to say and spotlight her and let her speak the truth. Go for it. Sweet. I'm so glad to be here. First and foremost, I love seeing all your faces and getting to know you. Um, I feel like Allie and I have like this energy vibe. So when I see her team, I feel like I like automatically connect with you guys. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I wanted to start off this call by talking about the mindset around inviting before I hop into how I find people to invite and what that process looks like, because I feel like a lot of times we know we need to invite, right? But we aren't in that like mindset of being successful or thinking that we're successful because inviting is super scary. I remember as a new coach and still now, like I still get like super nervous to invite and it's just something that truly you have to do every day so that it becomes part of your day, right? So you don't get rusty. Um, I know, gosh, like over Christmas, I felt the rust starting to build. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get back on this so it doesn't feel weird. Um, so first and foremost, I'm just going to talk about my top tips for being a coach, right? And then hop into like the mindset piece. So first, love yourself, please. Love yourself. Um, I cannot say this enough. If you are not putting time into yourself and committing to a program, you're not going to be able to help other people, right? You have to work on you first and foremost. So model what you expect your team and challengers to do. If you want them to log into my challenge tracker, you need to be logging to. If you want them to check into your group and post their recipes and things like that, you need to do it too. I realized this. This year was the eye-opening moment for me and that I was saying, well, why aren't they doing those things when I myself wasn't doing them? So just make sure that you lead from the front and you show them what the model is so that they follow that. Also, you know, don't post everything beach body and fitness. We love this. We love fitness. We love working out. Some of us do, some of us don't, but you know, make sure that when you're posting, you're giving them value, right? You're giving them content. You're telling a story. You don't need a call to action every time you post, right? You can do that in your stories. If you want to call to action in your stories every single day, do it. But you don't have to do it every time you post. Don't feel like you need to be constantly saying comment below or, you know, things like that. Um, 
My third tip is IG stories. Oh my gosh, you guys. IG stories are life. And if you're not on Instagram or you're not doing stories, you're missing out on so many people that you can talk to and just people that you have a reason to talk to, right? They're watching your stories and they see your life every day. They're opening the door to you inviting them. They're already, so what's interesting is how social media has changed is it used to be, oh, if they're my Facebook friend, they're my warm market, right? But now we have Instagram where it's like, if they're watching your stories and they're liking your posts, they're in your warm market. Like they are your people. So when you reach out to them, they're going to know things about you and you're going to be like, how the hell do you know that? Because they've been watching you, right? So personally think about you as a coach. Like did you just like reach out to Allie and go, oh, hey, I want to join a challenge group and like, I want Shakeology and vegan. Thanks. Like you didn't do that because no one does, you know? So really reach out to them and say, I see you're watching my stories. Like, do you like, do you want to do this with us? Like we're starting this awesome group and this is what you get. And like, just learn about them because chances are they've thought about it or they wouldn't be still watching your stories. So that's my third tip is really just being present there and being consistent because when they see your consistency, they're going to know that you're in this for the long haul. And a lot of their questions are already going to be answered, right? Like what's that shake you're drinking? Well, you've probably seen you make it. They've probably seen you talk about it or do funny captions like lots of salad or, um, I hate salad. So I drink this, you know, things like that. They're going to, already get the answers to a lot of questions that they would ask if you started a conversation with them. Um, so yeah, consistency, consistency, consistency. Like people start to message you. Like when you message them, they'll be like, oh my God, I wish I had the consistency you do, or I wish I did that every day. And you're going to be able to teach them how you do it. So it's so important that you're, you're present and you're there. All right, any questions? I talk super fast, so I'm trying to slow it down. <laughs> any questions about that before I move on to like so, inviting? I know what a call to action is. Can you elaborate? Because I've got a lot of newer coaches um, that have just joined and I, they might not know exactly what a call to action is or what the difference between an adding a value post and mm -hmm. a call to action post. So maybe just elaborate on that a little bit more. Sure. So, Value. When, when I say value, it's where you're, the person that's reading it can take something from it and use it immediately, whether it's a tip, whether it's something that's inspiring, um, motivating, a recipe. It's something that they can read and they can use that in their life and apply it immediately. Like it brings something to their life. Now, call to action is think about if you're asking the person that's reading your post to do something. So whether you're asking them to comment, whether you're asking them to message you or drop an emoji, um, that would be a call to action. A lot of people will do like drop your email or fill out the form in my comments. Um, those are call to action posts. And honestly, if you are on your game during the week, you don't need to do one of those every day. Um, people are going to be seeing your story and they're going to comment below if they're interested. Um, so make sure you break it up between value and then having that call to action with asking them to do something. All right. So I take invite, I've taken, taken inviting from a different standpoint since August. So if you guys don't know, and I'm sure you do, cause Allie's your coach in August, we all had this challenge, right? We were trying to get our butts into this test group and you know, top success club point earners were going to get picked and I'd be damned if I didn't get in. So what I actually like really dug in and had to get creative. And I feel like that is where the magic happens, um, especially with inviting and growing your business. When you have to get creative and when you have to get desperate, desperate in a good way of like, my goals have to be met and how am I going to get there? So I'm going to speak to you from a point of these are the things you can do 
to really maximize who you're going to invite, right? We have templates. We know the process of what to say, right? We have that available to us, but it's getting connected with those people and knowing what to do, right? How to not run out of your list and to keep on going. So the first thing is get desperate. Ask yourself, who are my people and where can I find them? That's the first question that you need to ask yourself. Who are my people as in what stage of life am I in, right? Am I, am I a mom? Am I starting a career? Am I going through changes, whether it's relationship changes or whatever it is? You know, what life cycle are you in or life stage are you in, that life cycle? Um, and where can you find those people? Don't forget about people in your daily life, okay? Coworkers, people at your church, people in your family, your friends, people that are everywhere at your doctor's office. Like you get creative in thinking about where can I find people to talk to and share this with? Because realistically, yes, you show up on social media every day, but these people are seeing you a lot more and a lot more consistently than people just scrolling the feed, right? They see your changes so much more than someone that's just following you on social media. And like, for example, I work in a school. So teachers sit there and they watch me eat every day, right? They're seeing my meal. So those people who are observing and already thinking about it, ask them if you haven't already. Go through your phone and text people. That's something that I did as well. Texting people and asking them and, you know, Really not thinking, oh my gosh, what if they say no? Just doing it and not thinking about what they're going to say back to you. Um, also, number two, looking for people that, like I said, watching their stories, people that are bloggers. Um, bring these people in and take time time to seek more people out. So really don't just go to some common hashtag that everybody else uses and, you know, follow people on there. Like truly think about who am I and what can set me apart? Because you've probably noticed that if you go and you hashtag like common things like boy mom, it's like every beach body coach that's ever been a coach is on that feed. So get creative and think of things that you love to do and who you and that you are and seek those out because it's going to really set you apart in your market um and Allie is really good at this too and you know always ask her because I mean I've learned stuff from her in this area so definitely you know come to her if you need help like diving into that okay this next one number three this is the scariest thing for me ever. Asking for referrals. Well, it like made me want to vomit. Okay. I'm just being real because it is, it's, it, it's awkward at first, but like, why not? Okay. First of all, it creates FOMO. That person's like, hold up, wait, you want someone else to do this? And second of all, it like makes you, people feel your passion, right? Like, okay, it's totally fine. You said no. Okay you know, who do you know in friends and family that would want to do this with me? Like, who do you know that wants to get healthier? Who do you know that wants to do this? It's like a nice way of saying like, thank you next, right? Like, thank you next. Now help me out. And I've actually had people be super nice and put me in group chats with people, like connect me with people who I would have never known before. And that one of them is actually doing transform 20 with us. So you just never know what people will say. And um, another thing you can ask them to do is to share your post. It's so simple, right? So if someone's like, I don't know of anybody, right? You first, you've asked for the referral and they're like, oh, I don't know anybody. Oh, well, would you mind sharing my post on your feed? And that way I can reach more people and then make the post public. I usually tag them in that post so they know exactly which one it is and have them share it. And some people will put a little blurb about you um, and some people will just share it. But think about it. How many more people are going to see that because you just asked for a favor and you can put it in that way. Like, Hey, can you do me a favor? I really appreciate it. And nine times out of 10 people do it. I've been really surprised. So next thing 
follow up with anyone and everyone you've ever talked to about Beachbody or a program or a free group or everything. Oh my gosh, the follow up, the fortunes in the follow up. How many times did your coach ask you to do this before you actually said yes? Okay. I was the person who was in grad school who was super hard headed. It took me two years, two years to say yes to my coach. She never gave up on me. She literally wrote down when I was graduating and she followed up with me after I graduated and I joined in that summer. I actually joined on July 4th. So never ever give up on anybody and just keep inviting them. Unless they tell you to leave them alone or go away, do not stop inviting them. Um, because chances are it's, it's, it's always not right now unless they're just mean and they're like, please leave me alone. Okay, so just keep following up with them. And always, always follow up and track. Um, whether you're tracking on paper or whatever you're tracking, just track them because you will lose them unless you have like an amazing memory, which I have yet to meet anybody with a photographic memory. You're going to lose track of people if you don't put down information about them. Um, I use streak and I love it, but it took me a minute to find it. I wish I would have known about it like over a year ago. Um, but just find what works for you. All right. So that was the number one big encompassing was get desperate. And these are the ways you get desperate. Second, and as Ali said, go all in. Think about what are you gonna be missing out on if you don't meet these goals? Like what will you not have for your life? Because for me, the FOMO for me was, I have to give it my all because I cannot imagine if I didn't, like if I don't get into this test group and I didn't give it my all, it's my fault. So for me, I was like, I have to do this. I don't want to miss out. But what do you, like, what do you not want to miss out on? Is it your kids growing up? Is it extra time with your spouse? Like, what is it? And have that fuel your fire. That's what's going to keep you going on days that you do not want to invite. Like, you don't want to do it. And you're going to have to think about, okay, I don't want to do this, right? For me, I don't want to test 85 children a year <laughs> and burn out as a school psychologist, right? Like, these are the things that drive me. And I have to remind myself. So what's your FOMO? And go all in and accept nothing else but that for your life. All right. I love, though, that you, I just have to say this, like, y'all, I freaking preach systems and tracking and all that all the time. But she's been obviously in this a while. She's a legend. So at least two years. And she's telling you that, you know, a year and a half down the road, she was wishing she had this at the beginning to implement because it is so much easier. We are all at the beginning. I'm using streak. I love it. It's the only way I'm ever organized. So I know it's a scary thing to look at and think, well, my business isn't at this point yet or something, but you're going to want all of those amazing fruitful contacts two years down the road because they say your success club points, like the people you're talking to right now, on average, it takes them 18 to 24 months to sign up with you. But you're not going to be able to follow up with them if you don't remember them. And I wasted the first almost six months of my business not tracking people and not being able to have follow-ups in a system. And it was awful. And so take it from someone who's been on both spectrums and now has, you know, a good tracking system that she probably wishes she would have implemented this you know, week one of her business to be able to have all these amazing contacts. Yes. And think about it too, like starting from the beginning, you're just adding the people. I'm having to transfer people and go back. And it's just so much extra work to do the back work, the backtracking work. So do it now. You know, think about it. Even if you have three people a day you're talking to, that's a lot of people in a month. And you're not going to, you're just not going to be able to remember them and like what their goals are and everything. It's impossible. All right. Okay. Number three is get an attitude, get an attitude that this is a gift. Okay. 
this is going to change it all for you. Um, like this is a gift that's been given to me and I'm giving you this gift. People can literally feel your confidence. They can hear your confidence. Even when you type, people know. Think about when you read a post on Facebook or Instagram, like you can feel that person's passion. So when you're talking to people, you need to believe it, right? And you need to channel like, how has this changed my life? And how can it change theirs? An attitude of gratitude will go a super long way. And it also shows them that they're missing out. And like, it gives them an, a look into where you were, right? Because people see where we are right now, but they don't see where we were even a month ago, right? Like they see all the shiny things that we post, but like, they don't see the everyday grind that we had to do to get where we are. So when you get into that mode and you start talking about it, you start, you start using, right, the, the feel, felt, founds. Like, I felt this way. I felt just like you, right? But I found this, and now I feel this way. And if you can go back to that, when you talk to people, you're going to see that your turnover with people, that them saying, yes, I want to do this, and being more ready to, to go is going to be a lot higher than it was before. Um, and use the verbiage of like, when you do this, when you sign up, you're going to get this. Not if you sign up, you're going to get this, right? You're going to be a part of our community, not you would be a part of our community. This really starts speaking it so that people are like, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And they'll get them into their mindset. Even if they don't join till next month, it's going to get their mind thinking about what it would be like to be in your group and be a part of it. All right. I talked about tracking a little bit. My last one's tracking. <laughs> track, track, track. And remember that following up doesn't have to be like two weeks down the road. I usually get people like two days to like immediately follow up and be like, oh, hey, I saw you got my message. So are you still thinking about doing this with us? You know, following up can be two days and then two weeks and then the next month. But you want people to know that you're still there and that it's not just like, oh, she didn't respond or, oh, she said maybe. And, you know, you just pieced out. So showing up for them and showing them that they're more than a number to you is going to go a long way. And you never know what question they may ask you now. You know, if you give them value now, right, and you give them suggestions on things that could work or, you know, even like ideas for lunches and stuff, they're going to come back to you. Like they're going to think of you when they are ready. And that's going to have, like, like Ali said, months down the road, they're going to be the people that come back and you're like, wow, that was like the easiest, easiest success club I ever hit. But it's because you did all the work before that got you to where you are then. All right. So do you want to go over some of um, like your invites? Like what is your inviting process? Do you yeah. do the small talk at the beginning and then it kind of weasel in or do you go straight for the kill? Um, and kind of like maybe what it sounds like. Yeah. So when I invite, um, I have a couple different ways that I go depending on who I'm talking to. So when I pull from my stories, if anyone has seen a story that's me inviting them to something, I will message them and do the peanut butter jelly. If you guys know what that is, I'm going to like, basically you're going through, I like to thank them. So like first I'm thanking them. Thank you for watching my stories. Like it means a ton to me. And then I'll just straight up ask them like, so have you ever thought about doing what I'm doing? Or have you ever thought about, you know, jumping in with our community and getting started? Or honestly, it depends on what I'm talking about. Have you ever thought about coaching or being a fit influencer? Just asking, like, have you ever thought about being? And that's usually my standard invite process when I'm going through my stories. Now, if it's someone that's commented on a post or liked a post, I will do something similar, but I'll try to relate it back to the post. Like if I've posted about anxiety and they like it, 
I'll message them and say, wow, thank you so much for taking the time to like give love on my post. Like I have been struggling with anxiety for years and it really means a lot to me. Is this something that you struggle with too? Question mark. Um, just asking if there is something in common. That is truly the theme um, of my inviting is trying to find that connection with people and what they have that's in common with me. Um, because I feel like that makes it easier to talk to them. Um, if they are commenting on something that's running related, cause I'm a big runner, I'll be like, I'll try to ask the question like, what races are you doing right now? Or what have you been training for? And put in a blurb, like this program has helped me with this. Um, I really tried to use templates before, but it was just so hard for me because I didn't feel like it sounded like me. Does that make sense? So when I am messaging them, I'm really like, okay, if I wouldn't say this in person, I'm totally not going to type it. So for example, if you're posting about this program, right? And you've got your step and you're talking about the 20 minute program and someone likes your post, you can message them and say, oh my gosh, I'm like so excited this, for this program. Um, are you currently working out or doing anything right now? Like we, I would love to have you do this with me. I'm so pumped to be starting it because it's only 20 minutes. So just asking the question, the worst thing they can say, right, is yeah, I like have this total plan and it's going wonderfully. That rarely happens. Um, so opening the door to ask that question um, can really lead you in some good conversation. I love that. So do you, you kind of try to establish a conversation before you just go automatically and invite them into your boot camp. Yeah, I kind of see it as like, I'm kind of inviting them, but kind of not because I'm asking them if they've ever thought about it or if they like, if they are currently doing something. And then from there, I immediately invite them afterwards. So okay. I'll take what they give me then be like, oh my gosh, this will be a perfect fit for you. Or I'll ask them more questions to get more information and then find a way that it links to our boot camps. Um, because I am a very like to the point person. Me too. Um, and I find that my people are too. Like they want to know what I'm doing <laughs> and they want the information. So something I've also been doing is we have this awesome rise up PDF um, where it has like all the different packages and everything. So once I've talked to them a little bit, I'll be like, and you know, I say like, it's a perfect fit for you. Like you're going to love it. What's your email? And I'm going to send you this info over so you can look at it and let me know like what fits you best and what packages you want to do. Um, and that's actually worked really well. And people will come back either. They'll come back and be like, Oh yeah, I looked at it or I follow up. And I say, hey, girl, did you get to look at that email I sent you? What do you think? And then that either prompts them to go look at it or that prompts them to check in with me and say, oh, my gosh, yeah, this is, you know, this is what I have. People know if they can afford it automatically and they know how when you're inviting someone, people know if they're going to do it or not in the back of their mind. They're just waiting for you to ask the right questions. And I really believe that. Um, so sending them their information actually makes them more aware of what you're doing. And I feel like they, um, feel more equipped to make a decision that's informed rather than just listening to you talk about a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love that. And it's, it's, it's nice to see like me, I always just invite to the boot camp. So I don't ask, I don't get to know them in the front end. Um, once I find out that they're interested, then I get to know them and invest time into them and stuff like that. But what works for me isn't going to work for you and what works. And it's just such a beautiful thing because it's like, I pride myself on being super forthcoming on like Instagram stories. And like, I feel like that does all the hard work of like them trusting me and them getting to know me. So when I go into the inbox, they already know me. But if you're just establishing your coaching business, they don't have that trust yet. So you have to start with those conversations. And I like how it kind of takes the pressure off because you're like, I mean, have you been interested? Cause if they're like, 
they haven't thought about it, they say no, it's like the pressure's off. So if they say no, that they've never thought about it, do you come back to try to circle it around into a conversation? And how would you go about doing that? Um, people have, people honestly, <laughs> They'll say like, no, I haven't thought about it, but I've seen like what you do. And then I'll just start talking about a little bit about what we do. Like, oh yeah. So, you know, this is basically like, this is what I do. Oh yeah. Like I run these boot camps, and like, I've been doing this for a while. Um, like, and just trying to find a way to be like, so have you done this before? Like, are you working out? Like just leading it back to that because if they haven't thought of it before, they at least know that I'm doing it. Like Allie says, like, are you really, really not thought about it? Or are you just saying no, because like, it's awkward kind of thing. Um, usually I don't have people say no, they haven't thought about it. They usually are just like, oh yeah, I've seen that. That looks pretty cool. Like, what do you do? And they ask like more leading questions rather than saying, yes, I want to. They'll just ask more leading questions to get more information. Hmm. Cause I've never, I've never taken that approach. So I don't ever, I feel yeah. like if they're not interested or if they've never thought about it, they'd probably just read the message. Right. So you, and have, yeah. Do you have like a specific follow-up system that like specific days or is it just kind of like, I, so I try to work a little bit every day just because with working full time, it's hard for me to put a lot of time in every day. So I try to put like at least 30 minutes in every day. Um, with like follow-ups and inviting. Um, so I set a two-day reminder in my streak and that's how I, re like, I remember to follow up with people. Um, and I'll go back in. If it's a conversation that died, um, I will find a way to reconnect with them, start liking their posts, start commenting on their stories, things like that. If it's a conversation that we were talking about the business or we were talking about the boot camp, I go back in and I ask them if they're still wanting to meet the goals that they told me. So not saying like, well, do you still want to meet your goals? But explicitly saying like, hey, are you still wanting to get started and work towards losing 10 pounds and having more energy? question mark because then they hear their goals again um and I feel like that really brings emotion into it and if you can get them emotionally connected then that is really really good for success with inviting too yeah no I completely agree it's like we've got to that emotional aspect is because if that's why whenever somebody says no or something like it takes the pressure off the table and so you really just get to know them and then that's why by the end of that conversation they're usually buying because they've let their guard down enough to trust you to talk to you and you can talk to them about those things so do you get a lot of like a specific objection and what's one way that you really overcome it um, I get a lot of objections with cost, um, or for me, and this is kind of odd probably, but I get a lot of, I don't have time because they're also runners. So a lot of my market is, is the running community, people who are training for something already. And this is extra. So for the money objection, I truly break it down for them. Um, and I'll be like, you know, this is how much it is a month and you get this for the entire year and you get all of these workouts. Like seriously, you can do it anywhere and just showing them value. You can do it anywhere. You have a community, like show them what that, it's not just nine, it's not just beach body on demand. Like tell them what else is incorporated and how it can fit their life. Um, and really, I just leave it in their court because I can't make them, right? We can't make them buy something, but we can show them the value in it um, and how it's helped us. Um, same thing with the running community. I will talk about, like, this is such a great way to build your strength while you're training. Like you can do this in addition to what you're doing and it's only 20 minutes or it's only 30 minutes. Like you have access to yoga, you know, taking it back to what they need, right? If they are doing, if you have someone who's in the gym and they're training for a marathon or someone who is doing like CrossFit or something, hey, if you, you can do this to recover. We have an entire yoga studio that you can use. You know, there's so many options. Tailor it to them and show them what aspects of it can help them. Because let's be real, yoga is like 
$14 every time you go to class, you know, like you can do yoga at your house and it's already there. I love that. You're relating it to something. I love that. Cause I don't have like a big running community. I don't even own a pair of tennis shoes. Let's be honest. <laughs> I had to buy a pair for a photo shoot. Like it's bad. Um, but I love that you are, you have that market that's already like, they have their eye on the prize, that marathon or something, but you're always like trying to bring in that muscle building because it builds endurance or something like that. But you're also relating it to like the yogis and stuff. Like it's $14 a class. I've never thought about that. Like I break it down. It's 13, 33, a month for yeah. the 160, but I've never compared it to like the class. I mean, a gym membership, but I love that you did that, that because it simplifies it. I think if people see that one big number and they're like, Oh my God, like I can't do that. But if you break it down, they're like, well, I didn't think about it that way. And I'm like, because any, everybody sees the three digits and then they automatically shut down, you know? And so, and I always, so one thing I've tried and I'm, is come back the objection before it happens. And so when I send the price, I like let them know that this is a steal and mm -hmm. that I also let them know I'm like, you get, it's regularly like this cost and I give them the cost of it, everything separate and you're getting it for this mega steal and it almost takes away that price objection. So yeah. you guys always want to try to come back that objection before it happens. Um, just because whenever they're like, well, she just told me it's a steal. Like I have to think it's a steal. <laughs> <laughs> like Black Friday. <laughs> like, like, you no, know. but yeah, no, I love it. I freaking love it. So I am going to, I know this is like not what we plan, but I have a lot of full-time working coaches. You know, they work their, their real business full-time and then they do this. I am a full-time coach. So I'm not relatable in that aspect anymore. Of course I did start. What are your biggest tips for being able to not get too many gray hairs, trying to figure out how to do everything and do all the things and still make this a successful business as you have until they're able to retire themselves or whatever they decide to do with this. So definitely first and foremost, set business hours for yourself because you will burn out if you don't. I know this from experience. Um, if you're working all day long, like you need to set business hours for yourself. So you're literally not coming home and working until you go to bed. It will make you tired and you will lose your fire and you want to keep your fire in this business and your happiness, right? So number one, set business hours, block out literally in your planner when you're going to work your business and for how long. Another time saver is get up with the chickens, okay? Get your miracle morning going. Like the biggest thing I, best thing I ever did for myself and my business was work out in the morning. If you can do this and work out in the morning, you're going to have so much more time when you get home from work and you're not going to be walking around your house going, Oh, I really need to work out and wasting an hour of trying to procrastinate your workout when you get home because you're really tired. So if you can do it in the morning, get audible and do your personal development in the car. I have like an hour drive to work some mornings and like I can get through a book in like a couple of weeks. So do your personal development, get a book and just turn it on when you get in the car and listen to it. You can knock out literally your workout, your personal development and drink your shake for breakfast and look how many things you've done before like you're even gone to work. Um, give yourself, give yourself a day off. Um, I give right now I've started making Sundays my day that I just chill meal prep is like the only thing on my list that day. And it really helps me to like reset and be intentional because I noticed that if I'm the energizer bunny and I'm going, 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 my brain can't reset and I can't get creative. So I can't be fresh and creative for my business if I don't recharge my batteries. Um, what do you prioritize? So I know since you can't do all like maybe the graphics and all the other things that, you know, me or another full-time coach can do because we have an, a lot of time, enough time to do it. So what are like your top three things, non-negotiable every single day you fit in your 30 minutes to an hour that you have available? Invite first and foremost, 
you have to get your invites help because you're not going to build a business without it. Invite. And I can tell you this like firsthand in August, I was not as present on social media, but I was inviting and I was doing the behind the scenes work. And that is what got me to the where I had to be. So you're going to have a lot more success behind the scenes, inviting, adding to your network. And honestly, doing your vitals because they're your vitals for a reason. Like vitals, you have to do your vitals. Inviting is part of your vitals, but if you're not working out and you're not drinking your shake and you're not doing your program, like how, how can you be present, right? So do those vitals, add to your network, and that your business will still grow, okay? It will still grow. Um, like Ali said, you can't spend tons and tons of time trying to perfect graphics and, you know, all these extra things or posting on stories 25,000 times. Like, get like five stories in and make them really count for your day. Um, yeah, invite. Just if you invite, period, and be, be a product of the product, like you're going to have people in your corner to invite every single day. So you all understand that, right? You're not supposed to invite at all. Like that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> like we, I preach it so much, but maybe it helps hear somebody else preach it just as much. Because y'all, that's literally how I built my business so quickly and so successfully is because I've invited 10x. Like I've always 10x my invites and I've always, you know, done all that, the, all the things. I love how she does say take one day off. My day is Saturdays because nobody and their mom, like nobody's on social media on Saturdays. So I do that now, but in the beginning I didn't and I do regret it because I did hit a plateau in my business where I was like, it just wasn't fun anymore. Like I was, I was exhausted. I was overworked, underpaid. Let's just be real because we're building a business here and you're, you start second guessing every single thing you do. And so you, to keep that fire, I love that she's like, keep those business hours. Because something I still need to work at, but we all know one mama to another, all of the other mamas out there. It's hard to have business hours when them babies are just little brats, but <laughs> I for sure, for sure can agree to that. Well, I'm so thankful that you came. You just give such a different perspective and I love, and you know, it all pretty much boils down to you've got to invite your face off, you know, and set a consistent number of invites that you can do. You know, I loved her, her method. It's just like, have you ever been interested in this? Cause it kind of takes that pressure off of it. Um, and then go for no, like don't leave them alone. And I feel like sometimes we talk ourselves out of the sale because we're trying to convince rather than just being proof that this is work and that I believe in this. So I don't need to convince you because the, the results speak for themselves. And then I love that she said, have attitude. Because like literally, I, one reason I think I am so successful is because I have like the no BS eyes. Like I am very, very quick to call somebody out on their BS because I did it for so freaking long. So if you go into this, and I'm telling you because I was the one with all the excuses. So I know all the excuses and I know how to combat them because I had them, I was there. But you've got to think, you know, like you can't think with a scarcity mindset. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, we think like we need the success club points. Like we need these success club points. Like this is, this is it. Like this, I finally got somebody interested. I can't like lose them. And so you're afraid to kind of push back a little bit and, and, and fear of losing them. And we can never be afraid of losing somebody. We just have to, and it, and believe in the products and believe that you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. Like I use Adriana as an excuse all the time or an example, sorry, as all the time. She was my first, I did a coach, like she was my first actual coach recruit that I did like a lot zoom with and like talk to her and she, like about coaching. And I, I stumbled over my words. I had no idea what I was talking about. I literally was crap. And she was like, I thought you did so amazing. Like I was so ready to do this. And I was like, it's just because you were in the right mindset. Like you, I could have literally talked to you about like dog food the entire time. And you probably would have bought it because you were that ready. You were that excited. 
And so that's, you've just got to go into it with that mindset of, we can never say the wrong thing to the right person. And so go in there with attitude. Go in there, like you've got this gift, and if they're saying no, they're the stupidest person on this earth to say no to a gift like this, and just love and release. Because remember, we can't help everybody, but I promise you those ones that are so against it are gonna be your success club points a year from now when every single quick fix fails. I'm seeing that right now firsthand, that people I talked to when I was the baby, baby, baby coach, are like, all right, I'm, I'm done. Like I, I need, I'm ready. And I'm like, I haven't talked to you since April. But okay. <laughs> you know, so consistently yeah. invite and don't be afraid to offend people. And invite them during, don't wait. They said, if you're in the coach test group for transfer 20, don't wait. Okay. Like do it now while you're doing it. Um, it and was take people on the journey. It was hard for us to not be able to take you guys on the journey with us. Like we were like dying inside. Okay. Literally, literally dying. So take, this is your gift. Like you get to document from week one, like show that that's why people want to be in test groups because when you finish, you're like, Oh my God, everybody in the world needs to do this because it's the attitude, right? Like y'all are all going to do this program too. It's not like we're the only people in the whole world that are going to get to do this program, but like there's such a fire inside of you to deliver it to other people. So and pretend you're in a test group, like no one else has done it. <laughs> And it's such a beautiful thing for, um, especially, I know I have tons of baby, baby coaches on here. Like they haven't even sent their first invite. Aww. I know. I, I know. I have a lot of new coaches this year and I'm so freaking so excited. It like literally sets my soul on fire, but like, it's so, it's so hard to do that first record that first workout or, you know, send that first invite, but you just have to think like, how rad is it going to be for me to put like my first round video and my second round video together and just take people on that journey and show them that like you can do this and come to this place. Like, I think that was so powerful is like, I'm on my third round of this. And so at my first and second, I shared videos all the time difference and it really in, in trust and believes because they see how far you've come. They don't see the struggle that it took to get there. And if they get to go on that journey with you, they're going to, it's going to empower them to believe they can do it too, because they're at the lowest point. They're at your point A when you're at your point B, you know what I mean? So don't be afraid to share your journey because being proof of the product means nothing unless you share it. And Lindsay asked, um, do you feel like once you started making more of a transformation, you became more successful? Um, I think it's once I started sharing it because People actually will, when you're in the beginning and you're sharing, like they are seeing the transformation, like Ali said. I feel like now having Transform 20 really helped them see the progression. But a lot of times when you, if you wait till the end and they only see the end, you don't get as many people following you, right? So I think once you start sharing the transformation, which starts from day one, that then you build momentum and you see that success over time. I just want, and I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say much. She can choose if she wants to say this, but you do not have to have the typical fantastic, amazing, gorgeous before and after that is eye catching to be successful. And Courtney is living proof of that because she's had her own struggles and she has had her own, you know, tidbits and, and struggles and just demons that she's had to fight. And her transformation is like flip flopped and it's the most beautiful thing ever. And that's all I'm going to say, cause it's not my story to tell, but don't <laughs> think that you have to have the textbook transformation like I do, or like other coaches do your transformation can be all inside. It could be all in the, your smile, all the, in the way you carry yourself. Hell, it could be in the way you dress yourself now. And you've got to focus on those transformations that can happen literally on day two versus the physical transformations that take more time. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's actually, this is part of the success pod. Like leaning on your people is 
I was scared to share, to share mine because I gained weight. Like I got healthier. I ate more. Like I overcame a lot of really hard stuff with eating and my results were totally opposite, you know, and it's scary, but there's other people out there that are just like you and you're going to find them and it's going to make your heart so full knowing that you were there where they were and Allie said this to me she was like you can relate to them because you're here now so think about that you were where they were and you have knowledge now that you wish you did then so give that to them and present that as a gift to them and they'll forever be grateful for it your story is going to connect to your people you don't have to worry about your story connecting to everybody or impressing everybody. Your story, your pictures, your testimony only has to reach that, that group, that specific group of your people. Because if you're trying to reach everybody, you're going to reach nobody. And so don't worry about trying to impress everybody. Just try to touch the hearts of your people. And that's all. I love that because like, I feel like that's one super misconception about being a coach and one scary thing about like literally most of these coaches, they join me as a coach on day one of their journey. And so that's one really big limiting belief that you have to overcome to think, oh my gosh, I have to have this stellar ass transformation to be able to change lives like Allie does or like, you know, other top coaches like Ashley or whoever. And that's not the case because there's other amazing top coaches like Courtney, who has had opposite or not even a physical transformation as much, but the inside one, and they know how to tell that story. And so don't think you have to have this physical transformation, but you do have to have a story. And we all have a story to tell. It's whether we're willing to get uncomfortable and share that story. So I love it. I think we're going to leave it there. I'm so, 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 so thankful for you, Courtney. Does anybody have any last question? If not, then we're just going to disconnect because that was amazing. Um, everybody, take if you have your camera, turn it on. I want a picture, and then we'll let her go. I know Danielle is with her. Awesome. Oh, there's Danielle. There's <laughs> Perfect. All right, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.